Toma Loredana is out. Five new athletes are in. And Japan finally names its host nation slots. This week's episode of the Weightlifting House News Show is brought to you by the Weightlifting House wrist straps. These were designed by weightlifters, by weightlifting coaches for weightlifters to use. You can support all things Weightlifting House by grabbing some weightlifting wrist straps. So the big news is, and the reason why I'm sure a lot of you ended up clicking on this video, Toma Loredana is out of the Tokyo Olympics due to Romania's ban rather than her own. So of course, after Deng Wei from China, world champion, Olympic champion Deng Wei wasn't selected for the Chinese team, it seemed as though Loredana Toma had an obvious shot at the gold medal. There was no one really who could touch her in the snatch or, or even the clean and jerk by some maybe 15-ish kilos in the total. Along with Toma therefore being removed from the Olympics, we have, and maybe this is better news than not, I don't know, I think that's for people to decide, but based on what I've been reading over the last year, I wonder if this is maybe a good thing. It seems that Niku Vlad, the 1984 Olympic champion, the 84, 86 and 1990 world champion, the president of Romanian weightlifting who has played his part in, uh, I guess, in the modern downfall of weightlifting, you might say, is banned from his role as the joint technical delegate in Tokyo, though I believe he does then still remain in and amongst the IWF. So why has Romania even been banned? Well, Romania were banned because of just the sheer volume of failed drugs tests that they've had over the last well, really since 2012. In fact, in 2012 in London for the Olympics, their entire weightlifting team, which was made up of four athletes, was popped. And subsequently, several other weightlifters, of course, we all know a few of them, guys like Gabriel Crane, have also been popped. And the suspension of Romania from this Olympics also means that they're not going to be allowed to participate at the upcoming IWF Congress. And given at that Congress there's going to be the upcoming electoral and constitutional congresses, which are basically going to be setting up to some degree the near future path of the sport, this is kind of a big deal to not have Romania involved in that, and potentially a good one. So this next bit of news from Big Brian, Brian Oliver from Inside the Games with some great reporting. This is all a quote from what he wrote. The case report said, quotations again, while the IWF panel is ready to accept that the FRH, the FRH is the Romanian Weightlifting Federation, did take some educational measures, the fact that five different athletes tested positive for the same class of substances within a five-month period is a strong indication that such measures were evidently not fit for purpose. It suggested that there was an apparent lack of out-of-competition testing in Romania and said, quotations again, the panel is satisfied that the sport was brought into disrepute. So it seems that the independent investigators who looked into this Romania case can see that, you know, whilst Romania might claim they're doing a lot for the education of doping and the athletes, it's not enough. Five athletes, five months, same drugs. Sorry to interrupt the news show, but after recording this video, there's been some breaking news. There's been the ITA, the Independent Testing Agency? Agency, Agency report has come out, uh, which has basically looked into doping and weightlifting from 2009 and 2019. And there are some things that we desperately need to add to, to the show. So here are the, the main points, and this will probably be done in about a minute before we get back to the main part of the show. So the first thing you need to know, Former President Tomas Ayan, the current Vice President Niku Vlad, and the current President of the EWF, the European Weightlifting Federation, Hassan Akus, uh, have all been charged with covering up positive tests. So Vladimir's charge, Niku Vlad's charge, relates to the Romanian athlete Roxana Kokos, or Kokos, uh, who was allowed to compete at the 2012 Olympic Games despite testing positive at the European Championships uh, earlier that year, a few months before. Was that covered up, Dan? Sorry? Was that pop from Roxana Kokos from 2012? Was that covered up? Yeah, so the story was they kept it quiet in order to enable her to compete in the Olympics. Okay. So yeah, they kept it quiet to enable her to compete in the Olympics. She then went on to win a silver medal at the London Games, although it was stripped from her later due to retesting of samples. Next, Tomas Ayan is charged in relation to the Romania case, but also for a conspiracy to cover up positive tests from Azerbaijan. And then Akus, the EWF president, is charged with covering up positives from his home nation in Turkey. 
Also from the report, 29 probable violations that cannot be pursued uh, as either too much time has passed or evidence has been destroyed. And then also there are eight more cases ongoing about Russian athletes based on data that has been seized from the Russian anti-doping laboratory. That's everything, back to the show. So a very quick bit now about Toma's career. So she began competing at the senior level in 2012, meddling in the seven European championships from 2013 onward that she's been in, she's been in most of them. In 2014, after her second European championships medal, she was popped at the age of, I think, 18. She may have just turned 19 for Stenozolol, for which she served a two-year ban. Then upon her return to the world scene in 2017, she won the European Championships and then the World Championships. Bear in mind that China were not present that year. And then since then, she has won three consecutive European Championships and she's medaled at the 2018 and 2019 World Championships. And then her most recent achievement would have been the 2021 European Championships from April a couple of months ago, where she won, she set new personal records in the clean jerk and total and, and snatch as well, I believe, and got the highest ranked Sinclair uh, at the whole competition. And now at only 26 years of age, it probably doesn't seem like she's realistically going to be going anywhere after this ban. In fact, and th this is actually really important to know, so long as Romania doesn't do anything too naughty over the, the following eight months, they're going to be allowed back in. So it's not even going to be a year. Why is it going to be eight months? Well, eight months time is April. What happens in April is the European Championships. So Toma's going to be at the European Championships in 2022. So it's not much of a ban for Romania. It will, of course, be disappointing for her to not be able to compete at the Olympics. But unfortunately, her country has just done her a disservice from the moment I suppose she started competing for it. And again, for those of you who will comment this down below, the reason I'm basically placing the blame on the country is because I think we need to stop placing all of the blame on the athletes who get popped and start placing more of it on the system that dopes the athletes from a younger age where they have very little say in what's going on. So then very quickly, uh, what does this whole thing do to the 64 kilo category? Well, Deng Wei, Loredana Toma and Rim and Sim are out. So that leaves the gold medal position wide open for a few lifters. This includes Mercedes Perez from Colombia. More on that uh, later in this episode. Maud Charon from Canada. She's probably my pick for the gold medal. Uh, Sarah Davies from Great Britain, who, again, I think is probably going to be in there with a the medal, and then a few other athletes also. Next topic. There are five new athletes who will be competing at the Tokyo Olympics since I last mentioned about who was going to be going. Three male athletes, two female athletes who weren't in last week. Here's who and why. So the first is Lisa Marie Schweizer from Germany. So she moves up in the 64 kilo category due to the removal of Loredana Toma uh, because of obviously Romania's national suspension. So that's shuffled everybody in the qualifiers up one and she's moved into the spot. Next we have Sarah Fischer from Austria. She gets a slot in the women's plus 87 kilo category because there was no African weightlifter who was actually eligible. No one from the super heavyweight category in Africa was in a qualifying spot or even made it into the continental spot because no one actually did as much as they needed to qualify. Literally any African super, if they'd have just done the, the required number of competitions, would have been able to qualify, but they didn't. And therefore that spot has been offered to Sarah Fisher. The same thing then happened for the men's 81 kilo category in Asia. So obviously Lu Zhaojun and Li Dayin qualified from Asia, but Li Dayin wasn't selected, Lu Zhaojun got the slot, and then there was actually no other 81 kilo weightlifter in the continent who did what was needed to qualify. So no one got the continental slot. So that slot has been reallocated and it's going to Erkan Keramaj from Albania. The next is that Amas Sidiskis from Lithuania uh, has been promoted into a qualifying spot after Romain Zaitsev from Ukraine withdrew his position, which is bizarre because they accepted it, then a week later they withdrew it. Suspicious. Actually, no, it, it, might, it could literally just be something as simple as, as an injury. So um, it's one of the two. And bear in mind, I mean, Dmitry Chumak literally just got popped from Ukraine. So it, it could be the, the prior suspicious thing. And then finally, the fifth athlete to get in is Peter Nagy from Hungary. So he's got a place in the men's 109 plus spot because once again just like has happened with two others 
no African super heavyweight filled the continental slot. Bidani from Africa got into the top eight, uh, most recently snatched 201 kilos at the African Championships, but after him, there was no other super heavyweight in the continent who did the required qualification process, so that's why it got passed to Peter Nagy. We are still now waiting for confirmation of the tripartite commission places in 10 of the 14 categories, uh, and for news of potential national suspensions for Colombia, who have eight places, uh, and Vietnam, who have three places. So let's do that bit right now quickly. So very quickly, we are now, obviously we've heard back about the Romania situation. We're still waiting to hear the fates of both Colombia and Vietnam, which would open up way more slots, 11 more slots, eight slots from the Colombian athletes, three spots from the Vietnamese athletes. Now, I said a while ago that I thought this would go through. A lot of people think it should go through in time. I still think it probably should. But according to a very, very well-informed source who reached out to us and who was asked to remain nameless, it looks unlikely uh, that Colombia will officially receive their ban until after Tokyo, meaning that they will miss the World Championships in 2021 and, and the Continentals in early 2022. But that's it. And those competitions won't matter for the qualification of the next Olympic Games. So it might be that Colombia has played their hand very well. Very quickly now over to Japan. The Japanese team has finally named the team, of course, they get slots even if they don't qualify. If they don't qualify any, say, male athletes, they get three spots given to them for being part of the host nation, three on the women's side. As it turns out, four men did qualify. Several women did as well, but they didn't actually accept any slots there. They just waited to see which other female athletes from other countries were selected, and then they used their host nation slots for those athletes. So we have now selected Hiromi Miyake, 49, Kanayagi 55 and Makiko Ando 59 and like I mentioned last time despite Makiko Ando ranking highly enough to be offered a place directly Japan chose to decline that slot and they instead placed her in a host country slot Hiromi Miyake and Kanayagi would not have qualified for their categories on ranking but they fulfilled the required qualifying competitions in order to get a host country slot so the full Japanese team of seven athletes Hiromi Miyake, Kanayagi, Makiko Ando, and then on the men's side, Yoichi Itokazu, Mitsunori Konai, Masanori Miyamoto, somehow I've got seven fingers up even though I've only mentioned six people, and Toshiki Yamamoto, who should be number seven, not eight. And then the final story for today's episode, or this week's episode of the Weightlifting House News Show, is to do with British weightlifting. So on the last episode, I spoke about the British weightlifting champs, about there had been some... Uh, some friction between a large amount of the fan base really and what was going on with these British championships and what looked like a Commonwealth selection for the elite championships. I since got a lot of people saying that they were totally confused by what was going on also, but I also got a few people messaging out trying to explain a few things. In the end, we just reached out to British Weightlifting. We had a good chat with Stu Martin, a friend of ours, and he helped clarify some things. So I'm going to go over some of these clarifications for us. It's worth mentioning as well, the British Weightlifting Championships takes place this weekend, which is the 26th, 7th of June. On our last news show, we reported about some of this controversy surrounding the decision to hold separate physical and virtual British Championships this year. So essentially, and this is actually quite interesting, BWL, British Weightlifting, were faced with two big constraints. They needed to hold a Commonwealth Games qualification event, which had to be physical, and it had to be called the British Championships, which this is why this is where the confusion comes from. It had to be called the British Championships in order to match the Commonwealth Federation list of events. This event then had to accommodate athletes from England, Wales and Scotland, Northern Ireland and Gibraltar who want to qualify to compete next year at Birmingham 2022. Which, by the way, is my home city. It's where I am right now. So I'm really looking forward to this event in Birmingham. At the same time, the UK government rules meant that a national championship, so a normal British weightlifting national championships on the usual scale, couldn't be held, at least in person. Only an exception for elite athletes allowed the competition to go ahead. And this meant that British weightlifting had to limit entries. What they then did, British weightlifting invited the involved home nations to nominate athletes to take part, then filled additional spots by inviting the top ranked athletes from each category who are not nominated. All other athletes have the opportunity to compete, therefore, at the virtual 
British Championships. So I think it's clear that communication wasn't great, just as evidenced by the fact that so many people didn't know what was happening. They could have done a better job there. But as BWL pointed out, they actually lost a key member of staff in March, which could explain that. They also then encouraged us to encourage anyone to reach out to them if they don't understand things going forward. And they were certainly very happy to talk to us uh, and explain things. So I'm sure they would be for everyone else too. And that seems like a great place to wrap things up. Guys, we are being sponsored on this episode by the Weightlifting House Wrist Straps. We designed these over uh, a pretty long period of time. This has taken a lot longer for us to get done uh, than we thought they originally would. These are not your average weightlifting straps. Generally, weightlifting straps are quite thin. They're quite weak. They're there purely for warmth. These are strong. These are much stronger than your standard ones. Not only do you notice that your wrist is more stable, obviously you still have wrist extension and wrist flexion as you need, but it just limits the amount of of a uh, force that you would lose i suppose laterally in a press it's the same reason why power lifters would bench press with relatively strong straps you notice genuinely when you press with one of these that you actually press a little bit stronger so these are absolutely incredible we've got a link for those down below and make sure you keep an eye out on our social media pages because we have another highly anticipated item that is about to drop that you guys have been asking for for a long time 